All right, in this video, we're going to talk about... That's right, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving. Turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, and all that good stuff. Man, I can't wait. Um, for those of you celebrating Thanksgiving, I uh, hope you enjoy it. Be careful if you're driving. Uh, eat a lot of food. Enjoy your time with your family. And then uh, here comes Friday, Black Friday. A lot of crazy shopping and madness. My wife and I have done it for the six, seven years that we've been together. And uh, we don't plan on stopping now either, especially with our son turning three this year. His birthday is in December, but yes, we are doing a birthday and a Christmas separately, obviously. With all that said, I wanted to get a video up today before tomorrow, which is Thanksgiving and then Black Friday. This is the accordion style menu animations, and I'm skipping the auto remote tutorial for right now because I want to come up with something better than what I have planned right now for you all. So here are the accordion menus. I have four of them, and I can touch each individual section and it's going to open one up and it's also you did notice that each little section bar was sliding as i opened them up i can also close them individually notice i just closed section two there i can close four i can close one i can close them or open them in any order that i want i can still leave sections open or whatever and then not only that any given point in time if you want to close them all press any one of those X's and bam, they all close back up. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. But actually, before we get started, let me talk about one more thing too. Very rarely have I used the on-off switch in my KOWP tutorials. Most of the time I resort to a text or a list global for a lot of my animations. That's different here. Everything's operating off of on-off switches. I have five on-off switches. I'm gonna go over these with you. I have a one, two, three, four, and then an all. The one, if I touch the section one bar, notice that changed to a one, indicating that it's open. If I touch section three, notice it changed to one, indicating that it's open. Same thing for two, same thing for four. And then if I touch section three, notice it goes to zero because it's now closed or off. And then what I also have, that fifth on off switch, all, if I touch this, that's going to cut that switch on and automatically cut all of my other ones off. That's the way that we can instantly close all of these accordion style menus or whatever down back to the default setup or whatever you want to call it. So now finally, let's get into the tutorial. So inside of KOWP, I have four color globals. You don't have to use those or whatever, but I'm making four sections. The more sections you make, the more animations you're going to have to apply. So I'm doing four for simplistic purposes and to get the idea across. I have four on-off switches labeled one, two, three, four, and then I have that fifth on-off switch labeled all. All is only going to get used when I press an X. For example, again, let me just open up two sections. I'm opening up section two and three. As you can see, they're both on. I can close them individually. That's doing nothing to this all. But again, if I wanted to close all of my sections down at one time, I can press this X. That cuts the all switch on, but then one second later, it goes right back to off. Let me show you how that all button works. So I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna go to edit it. And then I have an auto off set to one second. So theoretically what we're doing here is we're never really toggling this on off switch all, the X that we can touch. What we're doing, unless you do it really fast, is we are just really cutting this switch on. And then when we cut that switch on, when we cut this all switch on, if I press that right there, it's going to automatically close all of my other pieces. Let me show you how I have these other on off switches set up. So tapping on the one here, if I go to edit, notice it's manual on, but the auto off is a manual and formula, and we want to automatically cut this switch off if GV all is on. And all we have to type in is GV all. That's automatically recognized as GV all being on. So recall GV all, we do cut it on by pressing the X as I showed you down here, and it does close everything, but then one second later, remember how we had this one set to auto off for one second? So hopefully that's all kind of making sense. Now let's look at the setup. 
So the eight things we're going to need inside of here, you don't need the text piece. That's what I have down here for teaching purposes. Uh, we have one, two, three, four stuff. Well, the stuff that I'm referring to there are these actual bigger sections, like section two stuff goes here, section one stuff goes here. Those are those pieces. But what I want to focus on first is the bars. Bar one is my section one that you see up here. Inside of this, I have a rectangle. Let's talk about all these pieces. The rectangle, I've got it set to my screen width, but it is important to note how tall your rectangle is. I have its height set to 100. This same rectangle is used in all of my bars except I adjust my color. And then I have my text section one, as you can see there. And then this rectangle here is really just a white line across the bottom to give it somewhat of a border. The position of this bar one that I've created is at the very top of my screen. Should you make this accordion style menu in the center or somewhere else on your screen, you will or may have to apply some clipping pieces to clip. That way you don't show because sometimes uh, this section one stuff may be up here at the top of my screen or off my screen where we can't see it. Um, so you may have to clip it but I'm not gonna talk about that here because that would involve even more stuff to address. But if you're familiar with clips, that's what you'd have to do. For now, I'm talking about the top of the screen, or you could just as easily put a graphic right up here at the very top if you had this section somewhere else to block the pieces in the back. Anyway, bar one, when we touch it, we want to toggle that on off switch that we called one. So that's all I'm doing for touch. There is no animation for bar one. And once you create that, go ahead and copy it and name it bar two. Bar two is going to be this one that you see here. Same type of rectangle, slightly different text, just to show you what I'm talking about, section two. Same little white line at the bottom of that overlap group. But the position of bar two is going to be 100. I didn't have section one moved. I'm gonna close all these sections down real quick. And section two, its position is at 100. And notice if I start moving it, it's getting it out of order. And you, plus you can see stuff in the background. So that's why I have it positioned at 100. 100 is based off the height of each rectangle. There is an animation for bar number two because I want bar number two to move down when I open section one up. So this animation is a complex animation, formula, if GV1, move it forward, otherwise move it back. Basically, GV1, if GV1, that means if GV1 is open, I want to slide bar two down some. How far do I want to slide it down? That depends on how big you want this region in here to be. When we talk about one stuff, two stuff, three stuff, and four stuff, don't go making these rectangles real big because if you go and open up all of your sections, your sections could slide off the bottom of your screen. The height of my rectangles inside of here, not my bars, my stuff is 200. So notice for my complex animation, I have it E set to normal, I have one entry, and at 100%, I want my Y offset to be 200. I've also set that ease to normal as well. You don't have to do that, but that's what I have it set up here. It is important, however, to move that Y offset the same height of your stuff, the height of your stuff, not the height of your bars. The height of my bars are 100. The height of my stuff is 200. So again, if I close this down, whenever I touch one, that's what's going to trigger this animation. Because remember, if GV1, we wanna move it forward, otherwise we wanna move it back. And when I touch this one and activate my one global, this slid down 200 units, which allows me to see this stuff, which is 200 units tall. Now make sure for your touch for bar two, make sure you toggle the correct switch there, global switch two now. And now for bar three, very similar setup here. For animation, we have to have the same animation for the GV1, and we are going to move it the exact same distance, 200, E set to normal in my case. But then we have to have a second one because sometimes for bar three, let me show you this. If I open section one, I want bar three to move 200 just like section two moved 200. But then sometimes bar three might have to move an additional 200, such as when I open section two. That's why I have a second animation for my section three bar. So this is the second animation. 
if GV2, move it forward, move it back. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern there. What about its complex animation? Same thing. Y offset 200. So these two animations are actually going to trigger it to move 200 and then maybe even 200 more depending on if one is on, two is on, both are on, or whatever. And that's what's going to trigger this three to move the way it does. Again, that Y offset of 200 is based off the height of my stuff, these pieces I have inside of here. I hope that makes sense. Now let's back out of here, let's go to bar four, same setup, change your touch, global switch four, animation. If you're following the pattern here, we now need three of them. The first one is based off of if GV1 is on, and again, it's the same Y offset I've gone over of 200, and then bar four could actually be moving if GV1 is on, this is GV2, as I showed you a moment ago, and now look at this one. This is gonna be GV3. Same type of Y offset and everything. So it's a pattern here, definitely, and hopefully you do see now, if you added a fifth section or a sixth section, you would need to add those additional animations for each piece as you went up. Bar two had one animation. Bar three had two animations. Bar four has three animations that you can see right here. Hopefully you see that pattern there. Now let's talk about the stuff. What stuff am I talking about? The stuff are these rectangles that we have here. So let me go to one stuff and notice the layering here. I have the bars at the bottom here, which is essentially putting them at the top of my thing right here. But these are gonna be behind my bars. Let's go to one stuff. One stuff has a rectangle. This rectangle is the width of my screen. And recall, I did say this, but now you're seeing it. That's this rectangle here. It has a height of 200. That's how far we were moving our bars when we were animating. I have some text here just for demonstration purposes. And then I have that font icon. That font icon, if I go to that, that's that X. I have it toggling the global switch all. Technically, as I mentioned earlier, all this is theoretically going to be doing is cutting our global switch on because I have that auto off timer set to one second to automatically cut the switch right back off. The position of one stuff, if we go to its position, I want one stuff to be right at the bottom of section one bar. So that's why I have it set to negative 100 though, but why do I have it set to negative 100? Negative 100 is actually putting it a little bit up here above the screen um, because this rectangle, one stuff, part of it's back here now, its height is 200. So to have it to line up at the bottom, since this bar height is 100, I need to move one stuff up. So really right now, one stuff is right in here. But when we animate, if GV1 is cut on, we wanna move this animation forward. Otherwise, we want to send it back. So what this is going to do here, right now again, one stuff is up around here. Half of it is off the screen based off my bar height and my stuff height. The animator, Y offset, set to 200. That's going to move. Now, if you can see this red line, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna zoom in. Watch this red line, it's gonna move down 200 units. See that red line move? And there's the top of my bar. But when I cut section one off, notice this red line disappears. That top red line disappeared. That's important to adjust your positions properly. Now I have no touches applied to any of my one stuff, two stuff, three stuff, or four stuff. Let's go to two stuff now. Same setup, let's go to its position. The position for this one is perfectly at the top of the screen. And the reason why, we are talking about two stuff. So let me zoom in. And you can't quite, you can see the red line here for the bottom, but it goes right up here. It's positioned right there. Now, as I cut this on, notice this red line slid down. It's sliding down 200. If I close it, notice this red bar goes back up and everything is behind these bars so you cannot see that. The animation for two stuff, there are two animations that are needed. One of them is... If we have GV1, if GV1 is open, then we have to actually slide this card behind everything, even though we don't see it. We still have to slide it down because technically the two bar is going to move. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm pressing section one, but my two stuff is right here now. We cannot see it because I have it layered behind my section one stuff. 
Now, if I open section two, you're going to see this red line come down. And now we do see it because it's no longer behind the bar. It's no longer behind the section one stuff. And that animation is taking effect right here. So look at this formula. If GV2, we want to bring it forward. Otherwise, we want to bring it back. Well, what do you think we're doing here for our complex animation? 200. Wild set is 200. And that's based off the height of each of my pieces of one stuff, two stuff, three stuff, and four stuff. So this pattern does continue on for three stuff. Where is three stuff positioned at? Let me go ahead and close everything down to give you an idea of where three stuff is. Three stuff right now is right here at this red line. Look at these red lines. But again, you cannot see it because it's behind the bars and technically it's behind one stuff and two stuff as well. But what I want you to notice is that animation, I have three animations now. This is the same one. This is important. You could just copy and paste this stuff, you know, once you create one of them. And this is the one based off of GV1. Same stuff, same 200 stuff I was talking about. This one's based off of GV2 because technically this three stuff has three different times it could move. Let me show you the third one, GV3. And again, all of these have the Y offset set to 200. And the reason why I need three animations here is because look at this red line. The red lines are gonna move, but you're not gonna see anything. We need to move it because whenever I do open three, that's when I want it to slide out. And now if I click section two, the three bar is going to move down, but this section three stuff is going to stay in the exact same position relative to the bar. And that's based off of me having three animations because technically three things could happen. We could have all three of them opened up. We might have just GV1 and GV3 opened up. We might have just GV3 opened up. But notice all these animations are keeping everything positioned where it needs to be. And then last but not least, four stuff you guessed it we need four animations one based off of gv1 gv2 gv3 and gv4 all of them are 200s and um, yeah there's definitely a pattern here but as you can see it does get very involved in terms of how far you want to move stuff and it's based off of your bar heights and your stuff heights keep that in mind pick nice numbers i picked 100 for my bar height and 200 for my stuff height. That way it was just real easy to type in those wild sets as I was doing my animations. And there you have it. Uh, keep your stuff height, as I mentioned uh, several times, keep your stuff height, something easy to remember, like I used was 200, and my bar height was 100. You don't have to use those numbers, but you're gonna have to play around with your positions a little bit should you decide to change these. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.